Hi everyone, this is Melissa with lovecovering.com and today I would like to talk to you about a topic that is honestly really scary for me to talk about. I wasn't sure what to do my video on this morning and I made a comment to Audrey saying, hey, I'm not sure what I should do my video on today. Do you have any ideas? And Because we talk about stuff like that. And she says, mom, you need to do a video on healing. Her brothers have been fighting off a pretty mild cold over the past couple days. And so that's what was on her mind. And to her, it's just a no brainer. Just talk about healing mom. And me, I'm thinking, I don't know if I'm brave enough to do that. Divine healing is something that I have very strong feelings on because I've experienced it multiple times throughout my life. And I know so many other people who have, so I know that it is a real thing. I know it based on the teachings of the Bible. I know it based on the teachings of science. I know it based on the teachings of near-death experiences, of which there are millions, and I have personally studied dozens, if not hundreds. So I know it deep down in my soul and through my experience, I know that it is true and it's real, but it's a very scary thing to talk about because it's not accepted in our culture. And not so much the fact that it's not accepted, but people, sickness and disease is a very personal thing. And so many people are struggling. People have lost loved ones, people who have children who have issues, people who have been struggling with chronic disease for years, and it's so personal to them. And so people take it personally. When you, when you talk about divine healing, they take it as if you're saying that they did something to bring this on themselves, or they don't have enough faith to get healed, or that it is in some way their fault. And that is the last thing that I want to do is put guilt on people who are already struggling. So I just most of the time choose to not talk about it. If you're, if you're trying to get somebody to heal, you have to have them in the most positive mind frame possible. You have to get them to believe that they are healing and to believe that that's what Jesus is will is for them. But you can't accomplish that goal by making people feel bad and making them feel guilty and um, offending people. So it's a tricky, tricky subject. Also, I just want to say I don't necessarily feel qualified to talk about this because there are so many people out there who suffer more than I ever have. But I will say this. I was healed of severe, severe depression, which I had for over 21, which I had for 19 years. I was healed of irritable bowel syndrome. I have been healed of chronic plantar fasciitis in my feet to where I was bedridden for a period of time. I have recently been healed of colitis and again, irritable bowel syndrome. I am just on the tail end of receiving my healing for that and so many other smaller things. So that's the perspective that I'm coming from and that's my experience on it. So I will just put it out there and say that yes, I believe in divine healing. I have experienced it multiple times in my life. So many times that honestly, I've lost track now. Um, so I guess I'll just talk a little bit about that today. So basically what is divine healing? It's the teaching that Jesus came not just to forgive our sins and let us go to heaven someday when we die, but Jesus came to reconcile all of creation back to God now. He has done his work. He did everything on the cross and in his resurrection that is necessary for everything in this world to be made right now. He said when he was on the earth, that he was ushering in the kingdom of God. He said, the kingdom of God is here, the, or the kingdom of heaven is here. That means heaven is here now. It is accessible to us here and now. And there are several passages that talk about him restoring the creation or restoring all things or renewing all things. And so the teaching of divine healing is that physical health and healing is included in the atonement and in the restoration. And that if people would, by and large, accept 
what Jesus did, if we as a whole, as humanity, would accept what Jesus did and receive what he did for us, then we could have heaven on earth now. We could. Disease could be eradicated. Everything could be made right now. He has done what he needed to do, and now it is our turn to receive it and to make it real in our lives and to let that flow through us to the world and change the world. That is the gospel. That is how the world is changed. That is how things are made right. And if we could do that, we could have it now. As you can see, I'm very passionate about it. And the way that these things are received is through what the Bible calls faith. It is um, setting your mind, believing it in your heart, identifying with it, becoming one with what he has provided for us. Now we can jump over to science and talk about quantum physics and how the entire universe is made up of energy and how it is infinite. There is no such thing as limitation or lack on, well, no limit on what is possible, no limit on what can exist or what can happen in this world. The idea that there's limited resources and that we just have to struggle through um, hardships and sickness and diseases and all of these things is based on Newtonian physics, which is more and more becoming outdated. Um, take Somebody like Bruce Lipton, who is a cell biologist and has found from his work with the cells that the spiritual world exists and controls the physical world. And based on his understanding and multiple others now, the world that we have created for ourselves is based on our collective beliefs. Now, even when I was in school, this was over a decade ago. They were starting to teach that the germ theory of disease was false. That disease is actually, and even what we call contagious diseases, are more dependent on the state of your inner self, um, how healthy you are inside and what your mindset is like, than actual germs that you catch from other people. So what is the reason that it appears that we catch things from each other? It's all mindset. It's our collective mindset that we believe this is what happens and so we are creating it. That is what science is telling us now, although it is not very mainstream. It can take decades sometimes for things to get from the research into common understanding. And that's the process that we're in now. Um, so basically, this is the same thing that the Bible is teaching, that it is about our faith, it is about our mindset, it is about our beliefs, it's about what we believe and intend. We are creative beings because we are made in the image of God and we are creating this world. This is the power that we have here. It's the power of choice. It's free will. We decide, we create what happens here. Because of the gospel, we have the ability to rise above all of this, receive the perfection that Jesus has provided for us and step into that. And that is very possible for us. We could do that as a collective whole of humanity if we were to do that. However, at the very least, we can do it for ourselves and our families. Now, I'm not saying that if you do this, that your life will be perfect and you'll never have any problems and you'll never get sick. Obviously, my kids are fighting off colds right now. I am saying that it is possible, that that's the way that God intended the world to be, and that's what we could have now if we would all get on board with it. However, there's this thing called the fall into sin, where an overwhelming majority of the energy, to put it in scientific terms out there, is negative, and it's just the norm for people to be sick and to struggle and to suffer the consequences of sin in this world. And so as individuals, that's what we're fighting against. I am also not saying that if you are struggling with a sickness or illness or somebody, maybe one of your children is, I'm definitely not saying that that is necessarily your fault. Um, if anything, I would say it's the fault of the collective, of collective humanity for our collective creation, our collective fallen world that we've created for ourselves here. Um, now, let's be honest, 
I'll just use myself as an example and say that yes, um, some of it very much can be our fault, although I don't know that I want to use the word fault, I just want to say that it is under our control. Um, when I was raised, my siblings and I were constantly getting sick, even though we were homeschooled and really weren't exposed to a lot of germs, we were just always sick. And so I was raised in this mindset of being a sickly person. And I fully believe that that is why I've had so many issues with my health. And I've had to learn to get out of that mindset and start to see myself as healed, as a whole and healthy person. And I will be honest, it is still a struggle for me, even to this day. And I think that's why I've seen so many chronic type illnesses manifest in my life. So I personally, I would take responsibility for that and say, I, I've been stuck in a mindset of sickness and illness. It's kind of what I grew up in and it's kind of followed me my entire life. And so I'm learning by faith to step out of that. And it is a process, but that doesn't mean that everything that happens to a person is their fault or that they created it or that their faith or lack of faith caused it to happen. We're living in a fallen world. We're living in a world where we are collectively causing the consequences that we are seeing. It's not all down to one person. However, we do have the individual ability through our own faith and our own decisions to make to start to make decisions for ourselves and to start to use our faith to pull ourselves out of these negative mindsets. Through our faith, we can rise above and we can start to see healings happen and we can start to see these kinds of miracles, what we call miracles, but really it's the spiritual is all interwoven with the physical in science. But we can start to see the kingdom of heaven come to earth. So. I will probably come back tomorrow or sometime very soon and do another video on how to realistically live these teachings and how to start to step into these teachings. For now, be loved, be happy, be at peace, and I will see you next time.